Hi there, this lesson is EMF and internal resistance. So today we're going to learn what EMF is, explain how to do the EMF experiment, and then we're going to complete some questions, do some practice. So EMF and internal resistance. So EMF is also the known as electromotive force. EMF is the abbreviation. Is the electrical energy given per unit charge by the power supply, which is is the it is voltage, so because voltage is electrical energy divided by charge. The EMF, however, is the total voltage or the total energy per unit charge when there's no current flowing through the circuit. So internal resistance is the resistance of a power supply, also known as source resistance, and it's defined as the loss of potential difference or voltage per unit current in the source when the current passes through it. So inside the internal resistance, you will lose voltage. That'll become more apparent shortly. So equation of a complete circuit. So what I'm going to do now is to talk through the equations. So the EMF can be seen as the total, total voltage that's available. Then we have a a certain amount of voltage that's available to be used in the circuit. And then we've got some voltage that will be used up in the internal resistance of the power supply. This entire thing is the power supply, essentially. I'm just tired of this up then. So you could say that the total voltage, the EMF, is equal to the voltage that's available in the circuit, or the terminal PD, plus the voltage, that's a mu, the voltage that's lost, the loss of volts. And essentially it's a energy conservation because EMF is work dump unit charge, voltage is work dump unit charge plus work dump unit charge. So some other versions of the equation. So EMF is equal to V, which is the terminal PD, plus current times resistance. So that's the current that flows through the through the power supply, and R is the internal resistance of that power supply. Another version that's commonly used is the MF sig to V, so V will be I times big R, plus I little r, and then that factorizes to give I R plus R. So the ones that you will typically use are this one, and this one. So EMFs obviously measured in volts, voltage is measured in volts, and the you know the I's the current which is amps. If you get any R's anywhere, so big R is the resistance in the circuit, and little R is the resistance inside the power supply, the internal resistance. So if you want to write those equations now. And then we'll just give some. So that is the EMF which is measured in volts. Uh, big R would be external resistance in the circuit, which is measured in ohms. Ice current, which is measured in amps. And if a little r, that is the internal resistance. That's also measured in ohms. If you want to make any notes, please do. And then let's move on. So here's a circuit. So this is a required practical for the A-level. So essentially what we do is we change the variable resistor. And when we make changes to the variable resistor, we get differing values of current and voltage. The voltage we are measuring is the voltage that's available to the circuit. So on this slide, I'm just going to give you the reasoning. So what we're going to do is have differing values of voltage and current, and you plot them on a graph like this. So what that should look like, so the EMF is equal to V plus 
IR. And essentially what we've done is plot V against I, so we need to put this in the form of a straight line. So the voltage is equal to, we need to take the IR to the other side, so minus IR plus the EMF. So that's on our y-axis. This is on our x-axis. The coefficient is R, that's the gradient. And then the EMF would be the plus C intercept. So the kind of graph you should get would be, it's in the form of a straight line and it's got a negative gradient, the minus IR. So yeah, something that looks like this. So that's the aim of the experiment. And what I've got on the next slide is some experimental results that I did. I've got the results and then I've made a graph. So let's have a look at this one. So it looks like this. So as you can see, we put different currents. Through the circuit and then measured the corresponding voltage. I then got Excel to calculate the gradient and the intercept on the line. Here's the equation of the line as well from the graph. The gradient is minus 1.89, so the internal resistance of my setup was 1.9 ohms, and the plus intercept is 5.8 volts. So the procedure that we talked about on the last page, this is the type of results that you will get. So let's have a look at some type, some questions. It's so question one, if you want to have a go at this, let's pause the video. Calculate the internal resistance of a battery of EMF 10 volts if its terminal PD falls to 8 volts when it supplies a current of 6 amps. So straightforward. So EMF is equal to V plus IR. So the EMF is 10. Equals the terminal PD V that's available to the circuit is 8 plus the current of 6 times R. So it's 10 minus 8 which is 2 equals 6 times R, so 2 divided by 6 will give the internal resistance, which is 0 0.3 recurring ohms. Hopefully that went okay, let's have a look at the next one. It's question 2. Calculate the terminal PD across power supply of EMF 2 volts if the internal resistance is 0 0.5 ohms when it's connected to a load resistance of 4 ohms. A bit trickier, but have a go. So first of all, we need the current. So EMF is equal to I, R plus R. So EMF divided by the total resistance will give the current that's flowing. So current is EMF, which is two, divided by the total resistance of 4.5 ohms. That gives a current of 0 0.4 recurring amps. So now we can use EMF is equal to V plus I, R. And we've got all the information now. So the EMF is 2 equals V. Plus, we've got the 0 0.4 recurring amps multiplied by the resistance, internal resistance is 0 0.5 ohms. So we get EMF is 2 equals V plus half of 0 0.4 recurring is 0 0.2 recurring. Therefore, the voltage is 2 subtract that, which gives us 1.78 volts. Let's have a look at the next one then. It's question three. If you want to have a look at this one, just pause. The battery is connected to a 12 ohm resistor and a switch in series. A voltmeter is connected across the battery. When the switch is open, the voltmeter reads 1.5 volts. When the switch is closed, the reading is 1.28 volts. Calculate the internal resistance of the battery. So what have we got? We've got a, a battery with a switch that's connected to a 12 ohm resistor. And then a voltmeter across the battery. So we need the current that's in the circuit. So the current in the circuit is given by Voltage divided by resistance. The voltage in the circuit is the 1.28. The EMF, remember, is the 
So the voltage in the circuit is 1.28 and the load resistance, the resistance in the circuit is 12. So if we do 1.28 divided by 12, that will give us the current that flows through the entire circuit, which gives 0 0.106 recurring amps. Now we can use EMF is equal to V plus IR. So the EMF is 1.5. The terminal PD is the 1.28. Plus the current, 0 0.106 recurring times the internal resistance. So 1.5 minus 1.28 divided by 0 0.106 gives us the internal resistance, which is 2.1 ohms. If you got that right, well done. Quite a tricky one. Let's move on to the next one. So first one, explain what is meant by the EMF of the battery. So EMF is the work done per unit charge when there is no current flow or when there's no current. That's basically it. Voltage is work done per unit charge. EMF is the exact same, but when there's no current. So the next one. When the switch is open, it reads a voltage of 14 volts. And um, when it's closed, it reads 12.5 volts. Why are the readings different? Well, work is done. Work is done. To overcome the internal resistance of the power supply. And then you can say something like we lose voltage or lost volts due to internal resistance. And that should be suffice. And then finally, calculate the internal resistance of the battery. So we've got 14 volts EMF and 12.5 volts terminal PD. So across this turn on resistor, we've got 12.5 volts. So we can calculate the current in the circuit Current is V over R, so that would be 12.5 divided by 10, which gives us 1.25 amps. Then we need to use EMF it is equal to V plus IR. So the EMS 14 equals terminal PD 12.5. Plus 1.25 times R. So the 14 minus 2.5 is 1.5. So we end up with 1.5 divided by 1.25 amps, which gives us an internal resistance of 1.2 ohms. Hope that went okay. Let's move on to the last one. So recap of the experiment. Try not to look back at your notes, try to do this from memory. So the variable resistor is changed to give different values of voltage and current. Sketch the graph you would expect from this experimental procedure. And then what can you obtain from the graph and show your reasoning? So the graph is the IV graph, or VI graph in this instance, so V against I. And it's the negative gradient straight line. Like that. And then what we can obtain, so we use the equation, the EMF is equal to V, terminal PD plus IR. And then rearrange it into form Y equals MX plus C. So we need V equals, because V is on the Y axis. So V is equal to minus IR plus the EMF. So that's on the Y axis. Current is on the X axis. The coefficient R is the gradient and the EMF is plus C. So the plus C intercept gives us the EMF and the gradient of the graph gives the internal resistance. Hopefully that went well. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.